Shabbat Shalom, saints. I just want to thank and praise Yahweh Almighty, the one who sits high and looks low on all of us. And I thank him for the privilege and opportunity to stand before the saints and deliver the word today. I pray the message goes forth and does what it is called to do. Uh, before I get into the message, I just wanted to say I missed you guys. I mean, it has been a rough week. I really thrive off of corporate worship. It's like a drug for me. It's like a natural high for me to just be in the presence of the saints, lifting up the Most High, singing his praises together as one. And we did that for 10 days in a row. And then it was just this complete drop off. You know, and it's just been a struggle all week. Like, I just really been like bombarded. I took the whole week off for the feast. So when I came back, all that was kind of waiting for me. And it was just such a crazy week. And then I was on Facebook one day and somebody, I think it was Pastor Jeremy, but I'm, I might be mistaken about that, posted, it's time for a praise break. And I thought, get up, hallelujah, praise Yahweh. You know, I just needed, it was an on-time word just when I needed to be encouraged, you know, because I really was feeling kind of just weighted down. Like, I'm like, I'm back at work and back at all the crazy and the traffic and all the bills and all. The, and can we just go back to the feast? Like, I just want to go back to the feast, you know. So I just thank you, Jeremy, for passing, posting that because it, it came right on time. So... Today, I'm going to just forewarn you guys that this is not one of those feel-good kind of messages. Um, it is a hard word, but a necessary word, I believe, and I feel like it's applicable to every person in here, including myself. So don't shoot the messenger, okay? This is the word that God gave me. So the title of the message is Justified But Not By The Eye. Now... Some of you are already know where I'm going, just based off of the title. But for those of you that may not, I'm going to explain that to you. By the end of the message, hopefully you will know what that means. Justified, but not by the eye. So before we get into the message, I actually want to speak a little bit about one of the parables that Yeshua wrote, because I feel like this parable speaks specifically to the topic that I'm going to bring today. What's really interesting to me is I've heard this parable a hundred times and preached a hundred times and never saw it the way I'm seeing it right now. So this is kind of new for me as well and maybe some of you as well will be introduced to a new way to see this parable. So our flesh, this inherited unrighteousness that we have is always tempting us to sin, right? We are bent towards rebellion, pride, anger, lust, greed, godlessness, like all of these negative things. That's what this flesh desires, right? And so it's constantly tempting us to fall into these things that are transgressions of Yahweh's law, which are sin. But there's something else that the flesh does that's just a little more subtle, but I feel can be just as or even maybe more damaging than the temptation that the flesh desires to bring in. Our flesh justifies itself. Our flesh justifies itself. Our flesh is proud of its good works. The flesh boasts of its own righteousness. When people call us out on our sin, right, because it's easy for us to see sin in everyone else, but it's really difficult for us to see it in ourselves. So when people bring things to our attention, because the scripture says we're supposed to reprove one another, right? Because we want to be right before Yahweh. And so when people come to us and, you know, call us out on our stuff, most times we will minimize, justify, and excuse our bad behavior. We always have a good reason. We always, we always have a, a good reason why we are not submitting to the word of Yahweh while we're not doing what he's calling us to do. We always have a good reason. So I think that a lot of people in general have a hard time owning their mess, right? We don't want to own our stuff. But I was thinking about this from the perspective of people who go to AA. The first thing they say before they speak is what? Hi, my name is Denise and I am an alcoholic, right? They acknowledge that they have a problem before the whole group, before they share their testimony or message or whatever they have, because ownership is necessary. 
especially when it comes to repentance. Ownership is a prerequisite for repentance. I must first agree with Yahweh that what I'm doing is sin. I must agree with him that it is wrong. I must agree with him that I must turn from it, right? So ownership is the very first step. So when we begin to justify our sin, the things in our life that are contrary to the word of Yahweh, we are definitely on the slippery slope. And so that's kind of what I want to focus on today. So as I said, the title of the sermon is Justified, but not by the eye. So today we're going to look at the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, which is found in Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. It says, he also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, Yah, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, Yahweh, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted." Now, all of us have heard this taught or preached, and most of the time people use this scripture to talk about pride, and it most definitely is about pride versus humility. But what I noticed is, in the very first verse, it says that he is speaking to people who trust in themselves that they are righteous. In other words, people who have made themselves right, right? He's speaking to people who already have that justificate that self-justification thing going on. The reason why I believe that's what this is about is because the very last part, he tells us that this one went down to his house justified and not the other, right? And so now I'm looking at this parable from a whole different perspective than I have always looked at it. You know, I I used to look at it as a a form of we shouldn't judge other people and we shouldn't think higher of ourselves than we are, like pride. But now I see that there's a lot more to it than just that pride. So I want us to dive a little deeper in this. Now, back in Yeshua's day, the Pharisees were considered the holy men, right? They were the most pious and religious of all the believers. So they were like considered to be the closest to Yahweh, right? The closest relationship to Yahweh. And a tax collector, or in some versions it'll say a publican, they were the lowest, right? A lot of times they were unfaithful, they were extortionists, they took more money from the people than Rome even demanded so they could line their own pockets. So tax collectors had a horrible reputation and people hated them, right? And so they would consider them the worst of sinners and the furthest from Yahweh. Now these two men... These two men have a few things in common. First, they both believed in Yahweh. Second, they both went to the temple. They both went to church, right? And third, they both prayed. So outwardly, they had a form of religion, right? They believed in Elohim. They went to the temple and they went there to pray. But they have some very telling differences. And it's in those differences that we can see Why Yahweh says that the publican, the tax collector, the one who was considered the worst of sinners, was justified, and the religious holy man, the Pharisee, was not. The differences. So let's start with the Pharisee. So the Pharisee was sanctimonious. Now what that word means, sanctimonious, is making a show of being morally superior to other people. Basically, it's uh, holier than thou, right? It's uh, thinking higher of yourself than you ought to, being a little puffed up, right? Putting yourself on a pedestal and keeping everybody else down here, right? That was his claim to fame. He was sanctimonious. The publican 
which is the one who is detested by the Jews and considered a traitor, he came before Yahweh with a broken and contrite spirit, a broken and contrite heart. So the people would naturally look upon the Pharisee as the one that would be saved or justified. But Yeshua says the publican or tax collector was justified, not the Pharisee. The Pharisee sought to justify himself. That's what I want you guys to see in this. He sought to justify himself. The first thing he does, he begins comparing himself to other people. Thank you, Yahweh, that I'm not like these extortioners and these unjust and this, this tax collector over here, right? So this is the first mistake we as humans make, is we compare ourselves to other people, right? We have this horizontal view, and we view ourselves to other people. And most times, we're not comparing ourselves up. We're comparing ourselves down, meaning that we look at people who we think aren't as far as we are or haven't as accomplished as much as we have. And then we, we look at them and we say, thank you, Yahweh, that I'm not there. You know, we start feeling pretty good about ourselves because we're not as bad off as those people. Very rarely do we compare ourselves up, people who are further along than us or more committed than us or who have accomplished more. We don't, we don't do that way. We like this way, right, so that we can feel pretty good about ourselves. So that was his first mistake. He began comparing himself to other people and judging himself as morally righteous and them not morally righteous, right, just based off of his status or position, the second thing he did is he started listing all of his good works, right? Now, what did we say at the very beginning? Our flesh loves to make its boast in all of the things that it desires, right? Our flesh loves to justify, you know, our way of living, what we're doing, what we're involved in. And this is what he does. He starts to list off his good works. I fast, I tithe. You know, he's one of those people that's kind of toot tooting his own horn because he wants people to know what he's doing. He wants people to know how much he's giving to Yahweh, right? He's trying to show that he deserves, you know, to be right before Yahweh because I'm doing all the right things and I'm saying all the right things. And, but what he's actually doing, if we want to call it what it is, is he is exalting himself. This is self-exaltation. And we need to see that self-exaltation is not okay before Yahweh. See, Yeshua told us in the beginning of his ministry that the Pharisees did things to be seen by others. And he went on to say that that is their reward. So if you find yourself in that position where you feel the need to be seen by others and you're looking for applause and you're doing things for those reasons, it's self-exaltation and it is a sin before Yahweh. According to scripture, the Pharisees' self-righteousness was worthless. He tells us, unless our righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, right? So we don't want to be pharisaical. We don't want to be comparing ourselves to other people and pumping our chest and feeling like we're doing so much better and judging them as less and tooting our horn about the things that we're doing for Yahweh, their righteousness was before men, but true righteousness is before Yahweh, before Yahweh. Self-exaltation is a sin, and it has to be repented of. And I believe we're all guilty of this at one way or another. So we need to recognize this in ourselves and beat that thing back down. The Pharisee exalted his own religious practices at the expense of his neighbor. He trusted in his own goodness to make him acceptable to Yahweh. He did not plead the merits of Yeshua. And there are a lot of good people who mistakenly do the same. Well, I'm a good person. I feed the homeless, you know. I, I look out for the orphans and the widows. I visit the prisoners. I help my neighbor. I drive people around. I, I do all that stuff, right? When you start looking at things from that perspective, it turns into a work-based type of faith. But we can't get into the kingdom based off of our works. Yeshua is the way and the only way, right? And so when we start living that way, we're setting ourselves up for failure because this is not a works-based faith. But what we will do is work if we're truly saved, right? It's a fruit of our salvation. So don't mistake what I'm saying. I'm not saying we don't do works. 
I'm saying we don't do works to be seen of men. We don't do works to be saved. We do works because Yahweh gave us works to do, and we're walking in obedience to what he has for us. The publican, on the other hand, he didn't have a horizontal perspective, meaning he didn't compare himself to other men. He had a vertical perspective, as we should have. He compared himself to Yahshua, which is the standard, right? We are to measure ourselves against the righteous standard that Yeshua has set. And when he did that, he begged for mercy because he saw that huge gap between where he was and where righteousness really is. He begged for mercy. Mercy is, Yahweh, please don't give me what I deserve. I deserve the lake of fire. I deserve to be separated from you. I deserve whatever punishment you feel is just. But please have mercy on my soul, right? He threw himself at the mercy of Yeshua. The biggest takeaway here is that the Pharisee attempted to justify himself while the publican sought to be justified by Yahweh. And according to verse 14, he was. He went down to his house justified. The publican owned his sin, right? He didn't play this little self-deception game and act like he had everything together. He knew that he was guilty as charged, and he went in there and did not try to plead innocent, did not try to act like he was better than he was. He owned his sin, and we must do the same. Too many times we minimize, justify, and excuse our bad behavior, and it's to our own detriment, saints. I want you to hear this. There is an eternity of difference, an eternity of difference between being justified by Yahweh and our attempts at self-justification, an eternity of difference. It makes the difference between heaven and hell. You need to hear what I'm saying, saints. So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about being justified by Yahweh so that we can see that it only comes from him and stop trying to justify ourselves. So if we think about the study we did a couple years ago on soteriology, soteriology is the doctrine of salvation. We learned in that study that salvation is so much greater than just missing hellfire, right? Most times when you ask people, what does it mean to be saved? They think salvation is simply not going to hell. Now, don't get me wrong. If salvation was simply just not going to hell, that's still reason to rejoice and dance and shout and clap. Hallelujah. Because none of us want to go there, right? But Yahweh has given us this gift of grace. And it's kind of like one of those Russian doll things. You open it and then there's another one. And you open it and there's another one and another one and another one and another one. It's the gift that keeps on giving, right? You get more and more and more and more. So we took out salvation and we opened it up. And we found out all of these benefits come with this salvation. All these benefits. We are adopted as sons and daughters. Hallelujah. We are joint heirs with Yeshua. Hallelujah. He justifies us, regenerates us, glorifies us, sanctifies us. He imputes his righteousness onto us, right? All of these things make up this so great salvation that Yahweh has told us about, right? So great salvation. Do you know what you got? Because I think we don't. If you knew what you had, you'd hold on to it tightly. You wouldn't risk losing it. You wouldn't hold it out so somebody can snatch it from you. You would hold on to it tightly. So what I want to do today is I want to pull justification out of the package. And it's like the Russian doll thing. I want to open it up and see what else is in there, right? Because this doctrine of justification is just like salvation. There's so much more to it than what we see just on the surface. Justification is a courtroom term. So we understand and know that Yahweh is the great judge and that one day we will all stand before him in judgment. That is a great truth of the Bible. Now, because I believe that the Bible is absolute truth, right? That means whether you believe it or not, <laughs> whether you agree with it or not, you know, whether you even know it or not, every single man, woman, and child that has lived 
is living or will live will have a day of reckoning, a day of judgment, a day where you will go before a holy, holy, holy Elohim and have to give an accounting of your life. You will either hear one of two things. You will either be justified by your faith and you will hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, enter into my rest. Or you will be caught off guard with your self-deception and, you know, trying to justify yourselves and thinking you're okay, and you're going to stand before him, and he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. Worker of iniquity, one who practices lawlessness. So tell me, saints, if somebody calls me on the carpet for something in my life that is contrary to the word of Yahweh, which is sin, transgression of Yahweh's law, and I justify it, I excuse it, and I minimize it, has that sin left me? Is that sin atoned for, or am I still wearing that sin on the robe that Yeshua gave me as a spot, a blemish, and a wrinkle? Now, when I stand before Yahweh Almighty, is he going to overlook that, or is he going to see that? Is it going to glare before him? We need to understand the seriousness of not trying to justify ourselves and recognize that justification comes from Yahweh alone, alone. We often use the phrase, just as if I'd never done it. This is a beautiful concept, because I want you to know that we need more than just forgiveness from Yahweh. I'll give you an example. If I went out and killed somebody, and the family forgives me, there's still the matter of the law, right? There's still the matter of the penalty for what I have done. So even though the family may forgive me, I still could end up in jail for the rest of my life or on death row, right? So Yahweh's salvation is such that not only does he forgive us, but he takes away every single charge against us. We don't have to pay any penalty whatsoever. And that's what this just as if I never sinned means. But I want to show you guys something here. Oftentimes, people confuse justification with righteousness. And being justified does not make you righteous. Now, I know some of you may be questioning where I'm going with this, but I got my scriptural stuff to back it up, okay? So I'm going to show you. Just in the verse that we have up, justified means just as if I'd never sinned. The verse says, for he has made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might, uh, that we might be made the righteousness of Elohim in him. So clearly justification is not righteousness. It's an opportunity to be made righteous, but it is not righteousness in and of itself. It says might be made into the righteousness. Justification is Yahweh counting us as righteous in his sight. He counts us as righteous, but we're not yet righteous. Our faith is counted for righteousness. Righteousness actually comes through sanctification, which is another part of this great gift of salvation that we can pull out and talk about, right? Salvation, I mean, sanctification is being holy as he is holy, set apart unto Yahweh, dying to self and living for him, being transformed by the renewing of your mind and made more and more into the image and likeness of Yeshua. Sanctified, you won't be denied. Sanctified, you won't be denied, right? So righteousness comes in with the sanctification. Justified is not righteous. This is what it is. It is not a change in us, but it is a change in our standing before Yahweh. Did y'all hear me? It is not a change in us. It is a change in our standing before Yahweh. Our faith in Yeshua is counted for righteousness in Yahweh's sight. This is what we're talking about, saints. It's important for us to know the difference between these terms because this is what I see. Justification is one of the first steps. It's belief in Yeshua and the work that he did on Calvary. It's Yeshua's Savior. Who doesn't want that? Everybody wants that, right? 
Everybody wants to be justified, made right before Yahweh. That's what justified means. Made acceptable to Yahweh, made right before Yahweh. We want to be made right so we can be saved from the condemnation that is coming for those that aren't made right, right? But people stop there. See, they want Yeshua as Savior, but you have to continue on through the process of sanctification so he can be Lord of your life, submitting to his rule and his authority in every area of your life. Yeshua must be Lord and Savior. Sister Beth tells us all the time, if he's not your Lord, he's not your Savior. You're not saved. Being justified does not make you righteous. You cannot stand before a holy Elohim and be unrighteous. You must be clothed in the righteousness of Yeshua to be saved. So justification puts us in a right standing with Yahweh, but we are not yet made righteous. It is a process. Yahweh himself is the one who justifies and nobody else can do it for you. And the reason is, it's Yahweh's law that we transgress. Our sin is before Yahweh alone. And therefore, Yahweh is the only one who can make us right before him again. He's the only one that can justify us. I cannot justify you before Yahweh. You must go to Yahweh and repent. We get this twisted when we go and make apologies one to another, but we don't consider Yahweh in the matter at all. We don't go to Yahweh and say, forgive me, Yahweh, for the sin that I have committed. I have transgressed your law. See, that's personal. That don't got nothing to do with the other person. Yes, Yahweh would have you to go make peace with the other person. But you still got to go and make peace with Yahweh. How many times do we skip that step? Yahweh is the one who justifies. The basis of our justification is the blood of Yeshua, which was shed for us which cleanses us of all sin and makes it possible for us to stand before Yahweh righteous. The righteousness of Yahweh must always be against sin. In other words, Yahweh is true to his word. He is going to judge sin. There is a penalty for sin. The penalty is death. If you do not accept Yeshua's atoning work on Calvary as your own personal you know, um, a a propitiation, then when you stand before Yahweh, he's going to deal with your sin and you're going to pay the price for it. On Calvary, Yeshua bore the full penalty of our sins. So for those of us that accept it, Yahweh counts to us that whole work of Yeshua on our behalf. He was our substitute. He took our place, right? He took all of that on himself. In Romans 3.26, it says, It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Yeshua. That's talking about Yahweh. We are saved by grace through faith in Yeshua and his blood, which was shed for us. Yeshua did all the work. See, there's not, we, we did nothing to make ourselves right before Yahweh. We, we, we couldn't do it. Yeshua did the work. All we can do is believe that Yeshua is who he says he is and accept his blood on our behalf. Romans 5.1 says, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with Elohim through our Lord Yeshua Messiah. Peace. We can be reconciled back to Yahweh because we are clothed in the righteousness of Yeshua, which comes through sanctification, Right? But if you're justified and you're still living your life any way you want and still condoning your sin and still making excuses and justifying and minimizing, you are covered in sin, my brothers and sisters. And when you stand before Yahweh, it is your dirty robe that he will see and not the righteousness of Yahshua. What kind of people does Yahweh justify? Yahweh justifies the ungodly. Now, I want you to hear this because a lot of times when we think about the ungodly, we think about the wicked people right? But I'm here to tell you, you don't have to be openly wicked to be ungodly. Ungodly refers to any person who is living contrary to Yahweh. That means a lot of good people, a lot of respectable people who do not see their great need for a savior and have never come to Yeshua for forgiveness 
and are living their lives void of Yahweh, they are also the ungodly. It is not the wicked people out there. It is everyone, anyone who is not subject to Yahweh. That is the ungodly. So at some point, all of us were, some of us may still be, the ungodly, right? If we're walking contrary to the will and the way and the word of Yahweh, you are counted as the ungodly. Yahweh justifies the ungodly on the principle of faith. Now, throughout scripture, faith is the one principle on which a man is counted righteous by Yahweh. There's no other way a person can be justified. Abraham is called the father of the faithful, and he was justified by faith. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed Yahweh, and it was counted to him as righteousness. His belief, right? Yahweh counted him as righteousness. The same is true for us. If we look at Romans 4, 21 to 25, it says, fully convinced, this is talking about Abraham, fully convinced that Yah was able to do what he had promised. That is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness, but the words it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be counted to us who believe in him who raised from the dead Yahshua, our master, who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. It's the same for us, saints. It is by faith. We are not justified by our good works. Romans 4 or 5 bears that out. We are not justified by keeping the law. Romans 3.20 bears that out. We are not justified by attending church. We are not justified by anything other than Yahweh. And Yahweh justifies us freely. So it's not about what we are doing for Yahweh, but what about what Yahweh has done for us. That's what it's about through his son, Yeshua. Our part is simply believing and receiving that Yahweh gives us this by his grace, his unmerited favor. We don't deserve it and we cannot earn it. It is a gift but you must take the gift and open it. And you must apply the things in the gift to your life. Otherwise, you are not okay. So why do so many of us attempt to justify ourselves? Why do we do it? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Self-justification defined is simply the act of making excuses for oneself. That's what it means. When we hear the phrase self-justification, It's usually in the context of someone trying to get out of something, or maybe not trying to get out of something, but trying to stay in something. Y'all are following me. So I come to you and I tell you, you know, I don't know if you should be doing that, you know, and because it's sin before Yahweh, you know, and some people will justify it because they want to continue to do it. You know, well, Yahweh knows my heart. I I know, I know I shouldn't be dating unequally yoked, but Yahweh knows my heart, right? He, he's, he, he understands I'm, I'm doing so good over here. This just, you know, he, he's going to bring that person along. Eventually we'll be equally yoked, right? Yeah. You know, this is what we do. We justify our sin. There's nobody out here for me to date. Nobody's in faith. I don't want to be alone, you know, and we question Yahweh's ways. And we stay in our sin. So some people will not submit to what you're telling them because they don't want to change. They want to continue to do what they're doing. Other people don't want to be exposed, right? Because they put this facade up that they're so righteous and so holy. So when you call them out on something, it's a blemish. And they don't want that. So they'll justify their bad behavior there because they don't want to be exposed. A lot of times, a person's claim to innocence is to avoid embarrassment. They just don't want to be embarrassed. They don't want people judging them. They don't want people to have, you know, negative thoughts about them. So they will hold on to that thing. But when we try to justify ourselves, we are re- we are resurrecting that which is supposed to be dead. Do you understand? We are to deny self. Your self 
is in the watery grave. Your self is buried and needs to stay buried. When you try to justify yourself, you are resurrecting self. You are giving place to the enemy to raise that thing back up in your life. Leave it in the grave. Do not justify yourself. Take ownership over the things that you were doing in your life. We are to deny ourselves, which is die to self and live for him. The self is rooted in the mighty me and not the almighty. See, every time you catch yourself doing that, recognize that the mighty me is at work. The flesh that tries to justify itself is at work. Self-justification is a product of pride. It is rooted in pride. Self is pride in myself, right? It is rooted in pride. In Luke 16, 15, it says, you are those who justify yourselves before men, but Yahweh knows your heart for what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of Yahweh. We cannot justify ourselves before Yahweh because Yahweh is omniscient. He knows all things. He knows your heart. He knows your mind. He knows your motives. He knows why you're doing what you're doing. So you can say whatever you want to say out here. You may fool a few, but you will never fool Yahweh. And Yahweh is the one who sits on the throne as judge. And Yahweh is the one who has heaven and hell to put you in. It is not beneficial to you to deceive the saints. It doesn't help you in the end. You're going to stand before him in judgment, and you're going to hear those dreaded words, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. When we attempt to justify ourselves, it's always to our own detriment. There are big differences between being justified by Yahweh, because that makes us humble, and being self-justifying, which makes us prideful or arrogant. When your life revolves around being good enough, how many of you are stuck in this cycle of trying to be good enough? Let me tell you something. You will never be good enough. It is Yeshua in you. It is not you. It is not you. And when you have that type of mindset, you have a tendency to look down on others who aren't doing as well as you are because you make yourself the standard. You think everybody's supposed to walk how you're walking, forgetting that you had a process. You had a whole process. You did not start where you are today, right? You just want everybody to walk where you're at and you're making yourself the standard. No, we all have the same standard. Yeshua is the standard. It doesn't change. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It does not change. We need to be careful that we're not making ourselves the standard and measuring other people against our growth or where we're at, right? But when you truly understand that you're justified by Yahweh, there's a humility that comes with that because you realize that you could not be where you're at on your own. You are where you are because of Yeshua in you. Because you're being transformed and made more and more into his image and likeness. Your goodness will never be good enough. You recognize Yahweh's grace towards you. His unmerited favor. I did not deserve it, but thank you, Yahweh. And now that I have the character of Yeshua, I must now be gracious to other people. Right? I have to be just as gracious to them as Yahweh has been to me. But this is where we get tripped up. Justification makes you secure, but self-justification makes you insecure. Because for every person that you think you're better than, there's always another group of people that you think are better than you. So you're constantly in a state of, am I doing enough? Am I, am I doing enough? Am I going to make the curve? Like the college kids know what I'm talking about. Are you going to grade on a curve? Am I going to make it in on the curve? You know, we can't think like that. We have to understand that Yahweh justifies us by his grace, not by our performance. And if we can see that, it eliminates our need to compare ourselves to other people, right? We need to just be obedient to what Yahweh has given us. He has a different call and purpose for each one of us. Whatever Yahweh asks you to do, it's great in his kingdom. We don't need to compare our callings one to another. It's one big picture that he's putting together. Justification makes you thankful to Yahweh, whereas self-justification tells you you have only one person to thank for your success, and that is you. 
your intelligence. I went to school and I earned this degree, right? Your good looks, right? Your fast tongue, you know, being able to wax eloquently. You know, all of the things that Yahweh has blessed you with, we take credit for, for our own glory, which is self-exaltation, instead of giving the glory to whom it is due, which is Yahweh. When you understand that Yahweh is the one who justifies, and it's not your work that produces results, you will complain when you don't get what you think you deserve. How many times do we hear people complaining about what they didn't get? And it's because they're looking at what they're putting in and expecting to get a certain thing out. But Yahweh has a calling for us, and you're not always going to get some earthly reward for it. Our treasure is in heaven. We're building up jewels for our crown that we can lay at his feet. Hallelujah. Yahweh gives you what you do not deserve and cannot earn, and that is approval in his sight. That is justification. Self-justification is used to dodge conviction or sidestep correction. Who in here, by show of hands, likes to be corrected? None of us. Patty. <laughs> Most time, we don't want to be corrected because it's human nature to not want to be wrong. I don't want to be wrong, right? And sometimes we will fiercely debate our right to be right. I was thinking about a lesson I got many years ago. I was, I was known to be a pretty confrontational person. I've grown a lot. I'm not as confrontational as I was. But I used to be a pretty confrontational person until Yahweh got a hold of my life. Hallelujah. Now I can be confrontational, but it's really not my first, you know, it's not my nature anymore. I don't like it. I'm not comfortable with it. It bothers me. I don't want to have to do it. But it didn't used to be that way. But I was very good at debate. Oh, I could formulate an argument, I'm telling you. So one day I'm having this debate with Sylvester, our, our last pastor, and he said to me, you know what, Denise, just because you know how to argue doesn't mean you're right. And of course, I didn't pay him no mind at the time. It was just like, because you can't hang with me, because you, know, you know what I'm saying? But I went home and I thought about that. And I was like, he's right. Just because I can put an argument together doesn't mean that my argument is sound or doctrinally sound or right. And I need to be careful that I don't start believing my own truth and not the truth of the word of Yahweh. And so Yahweh showed me that more importantly than being right is being right before Yahweh. And now I carry that. It's like, I want to be right before Yahweh, even if it means I have to acknowledge to you that I'm wrong. I want to be right before Yahweh, so I cannot hold on to this thing. I must be right. I must be right. I have to put that in subject to the word and make sure it's right before Yahweh. Otherwise, it's to my own detriment to hold on to it. All throughout scriptures, we see people trying to avoid correction or discipline. The main way they do this, how they justify it, is they blame it on somebody else. It's always somebody else's fault why I do the things that I do. Lack of ownership. This goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Adam blamed Yahweh for the wife he gave him. You gave me a flawed wife. She did this. This is your fault, Yahweh. And Eve blamed the serpent, right? Nobody wanted to take responsibility for the choices that they made. They had free will. It was their choice. We all have free will. The stuff that you are doing is by your choice. Take ownership over what you do and stop blaming somebody else for your bad behavior. To benefit from counsel and correction, you must learn not to justify yourself. Take that thing and apply it to your life. Repent if necessary. King David although he made a lot of mistakes, was a good example of readily receiving correction. Now, when we think about David, he was known as a man after Yahweh's own heart. How many people in here want to be known as a man or a woman after Yahweh's own heart? I get jealous of the saints of old. I want to be a woman after Yahweh's own heart. I want to be the apple of his eye. I want him to see me and, and, and have a smile on his face, not wagging his head, right? I want that. And I believe that one of the reasons David has this title is because he's a man of confession and repentance. He confesses his sin before Yahweh and he repents. And I believe that's why he has that title as a man after Yahweh's own heart. But guess what? Yahweh's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know what I'm saying? And we can all be 
just like David. There's room for all of us, right? David was painfully aware of his own shortcomings. How many of you are painfully aware of your own shortcomings? How many of you acknowledge your own shortcomings? How many of you think you don't have any shortcomings? His desire was to make things right with Yahweh. David knew that in building a relationship with Yahweh, there has to be confession and repentance. You can't go beyond that. You're stuck if you refuse to repent of certain sin in your life. And Yahweh will have nothing to do with sin. If we look at the scripture, just to give you some takeaway, Proverbs 28, 13 says, whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. Mercy is not getting what you deserve, saints. The only way for you to obtain mercy is to not conceal your transgressions. Be transparent before Yahweh. Lay your soul bare. Own your sin. Own it. Take responsibility for it. In 1 John 1, 8 to 10, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So if you're one of those people who thinks that you have arrived, that you are the righteousness of Yeshua and you don't need to repent anymore, I challenge you to take a good, hard look at your life and the choices you're making and the areas you're compromising in and to see yourself in the light of Yeshua and not other people. Not even yourself. Some of us measure ourselves by ourselves. And we say, well, I'm not where I used to be. I'm here now. But you haven't arrived because glory ain't open yet. You know what I'm saying? It, the, the gates ain't open yet. So you, you can get closer, right? You can get closer, closer, closer. And so we want to be sure that we understand this justification. This is a beautiful part of our salvation that Yahweh has given us. Acceptable in his sight. That's what it is, just as if we never done it, made right before Yahweh. And Yahweh did that for us, hallelujah, because we serve a great and mighty and awesome and wonderful Elohim, hallelujah, who gives us this gift that just keeps on giving, keeps on giving. Stop stealing Yahweh's things and perverting them. We used to have a minister in the church, his name was Brother Willie Young. And he told me, you know, every time Yahweh establishes something, the enemy has his counterfeit. He takes the things of Yahweh and he twists them and he perverts them. So he's taken this thing, this justification that Yahweh has given us, and he's turned it into self-justification, which is not of Yahweh, which is contrary to Yahweh, which is of the devil. And we need to recognize it when we fall into this stuff so that we don't hear the dreaded words. I don't want to hear it, and I don't want to think about any of you hearing it. Let us go on by faith. And trust that Yahweh's justification is the only justification that we need. And own our stuff. Hallelujah.